Hi, I'm Martin Bashir. I'm a journalist, a correspondent, and a television presenter. But today, I'm your celebrity supply teacher. Today on Celebrity Supply Teacher, journalist Martin Bashir is taking a break from reporting the top stories and interviewing the big names to tell you all about one of his favourite people from history. But first, what is journalism, Martin? Journalism is about telling stories, real stories, so that people can understand the world around them. Those stories may be unfolding right now, or they may be stories from history. I'm passionate about history. So for today's class, I'm going to be telling you about a historical hero of mine who had a huge impact on my life, both as a person and as a journalist. This person inspires me every day, and I hope it's someone that might just inspire you too. Ready for a history masterclass? Take it away, Martin. My historical hero is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Even during his earliest years, he always worked hard at school. He went on to get very good grades and even earned a postgraduate degree, which meant that he was known as Dr. King. He became a Christian minister, and his first job was at a church in the town of Montgomery in the state of Alabama in the United States of America. And although slavery had been abolished by the time he became a minister, Martin Luther King Jr. couldn't understand why African Americans still didn't have the same civil rights as everyone else. Black people in America faced huge discrimination and many weren't allowed to vote, live in the same towns, or even go to the same schools as white people. And so it was that at that very church, Martin Luther King Jr. began his civil rights journey, making the breakthrough that would lead to one of the most important political changes in history. You know how people say that when you're waiting for a bus, it's really frustrating because you wait for ages and then two come along at the same time. Well, in America during the 1950s, black people had a different problem with buses, a much bigger problem. They had to sit in segregated seats, which meant that even though they would pay the same fare as a white person, they couldn't sit in any seat. They had to sit on a seat reserved only for black people. And it was on those buses where Martin Luther King Jr.'s political activism started because he led a 382-day boycott of Montgomery's buses. The bus boycott was actually started by a woman by the name of Rosa Parks, who refused to give up her seat to a white passenger in 1955. During the boycott, Dr. King was violently attacked, overcame arrest, even had his home bombed. But in 1956, the United States Supreme Court declared that bus segregation wasn't fair and ended it once and for all. And after that victory, there was no stopping Dr. King. He would lead the fight for equal rights and justice for all African Americans and would soon help others organize their own protests against discrimination. And his nonviolent tactics were severely tested during a civil rights march in Birmingham, Alabama, where police violently attacked the protesters. Later that year, Dr. King was the main speaker at an historic march on Washington, D.C., the capital of America. His speech that day, I think, will be remembered forever. He used a technique where he kept repeating one phrase. I have a dream, he said. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream. Dr. King gave that speech in the year I was born, 1963. 
A year later, America passed the Civil Rights Act. It was incredible that Dr. King, through his non-violent protests, managed to force the government to ban discrimination based on race, colour, religion, sex or national origin. In the same year, 1964, Dr. King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his incredible work. Soon after, in 1965, America passed the Voting Rights Act, which gave the right to vote to all racial minorities throughout the country. And yet, even after he'd achieved such groundbreaking changes, there was still another appalling moment of suffering. For in 1968, just three years after the Voting Rights Act passed into law, Dr. King was assassinated. The shooting shocked the world, but it couldn't stop Dr. King's march for justice, his desire to realise his dream for equal rights. And that's why he is my hero from history. Martin, it's Luke from Wayland. If you could interview anybody from history, who would it be? Well, Lucas, obviously I'd love to have interviewed Dr Martin Luther King Jr. The other person I think I would have liked to have interviewed was President Nelson Mandela. I never had the opportunity, but I think if I had a choice, it would be Dr Martin Luther King Jr. and President Nelson Mandela. Hi Martin, it's Sophie. How can I write a speech as powerful as Martin Luther King? Oh, Sophie, if we knew how to do that, we'd all be very, very, very successful. You want to work at building up the drama of the speech, but also having some lines in it that are repetitive and really powerful and that really sink into the audience. Hi, Martin, it's Chloe. Why is learning about history important? Think about it from a personal point of view. If you make a mistake in the past and you think about it and you reflect on it, you're probably less likely to make the same mistake in the future. And I think that's one of the greatest values of learning history. And I think history plays a role in guiding us into our present and into the future so that we don't repeat those terrible mistakes of the past. Hi Martin, it's Sophia. Did Martin Luther King Jr. achieve his dream? Well, that's a good question. He certainly achieved the dream of equal rights for African Americans, but his desire for us to have equal treatment and justice for everyone is something that I think we can keep working for today. Hi Martin, I'm Lillian. Do you know any other influential people from history? Barack Obama will end up being someone that we all reflect on historically, but also Winston Churchill is certainly someone that I'd encourage you to study, to think about and read about. Hi Martin, my name's Eva Rose. Did you like history when you were at school? Well, Eva Rose, when I was at school, I would have to admit that the thing I liked more than anything in the world was playing rugby. But when I went into secondary school, is when my interest in history really began to develop. I think from about the age of 13, history became something of a passion for me. And I hope that this lesson will encourage you to feel the same about history. That's nearly all for today's class. I hope you enjoyed it, and it's inspired you to find out more about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Maybe it's inspired you to have a go at being a journalist yourself. You know, right now, we're all living through one of the most life-changing moments in history, a global health crisis that is touching every part of the world. And you know, you're in a unique position where it's never been easier to be a journalist and start reporting and recording what you're going through. So grab a grown-up, pick up a phone, a camera, a tablet, a laptop, or just a plain pen and paper, and start observing, recording the facts and telling your story. Because that's what journalism is all about. And by doing that, you're also recording history, preserving it so that others can learn about it. So thanks so much for watching today. 
I'm Martin Bashir. I've been your celebrity supply teacher.